Welcome back. A key inflation gauge is sounding alarm bells, and it could have a big impact in grocery stores especially. The latest U.N. Global Price Index shows food costs reached their highest level in nearly a decade last month, thanks in part to supply and logistics issues. My next guest is feeling the pinch of inflation across nearly his entire portfolio, which includes energy companies and the Gristini supermarket chain in New York City. Let's welcome in John Katzmatidis. He is chair and CEO of the Red Apple Group, and it's great to have you here because... Your position to experience this really from the front lines. Uh, how much longer do you think this goes on? Uh, Kelly, it's going to go on. Uh, I predicted uh, $70 crude oil uh, about three, four months ago in September. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. It came now. Uh, and uh, uh, gasoline prices are continuing to go up. Uh, labor prices are going up. Uh, what does that mean? That means food prices are going up because everything is being delivered to the warehouses and stores by truck. Energy, labor, et cetera, all going up. Companies are not dumb. They have to raise the prices in order to keep track with uh, uh, so-called inflation. I predicted that uh, coming uh, September, October, you'll have an annualized uh, inflation rate of about 5 to 6 percent. Sure. I, uh, you know, I argue sometimes with some of my... Uh, economist friends like Cudlow and uh, and Steve Moore, but uh, that's going to be the number. So, I, listen, I think a lot of people would say, yeah, that sounds about right, but the question is how long, you know, and can it keep going up? So let's flip the calendar into 20, what is next year, 2022 already? What does it look like then? You know, do we start having prices come down? Can people keep, you, you know the consumer well, can they show up in Gristini's and go, oh, sure, I'll pay 25% more? Are they going to go, no, forget it, I, I can't, you know, is it actually going to hurt the economy? Well, I, I don't think it's going to hurt the economy because uh, I, I'm looking at wages going up. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at minimum wages going up. So it's it's an overall, you know, when the boat, what, what does it say? When the sea rises, everything goes up. Mm -hmm. And I, I just see inflation going up. And I, I also see uh, interest rates. They're not going to stay at this rate. I think you can see higher interest rates by uh, the end of the year. Uh, so it, it just... Uh, it's concerning. It's concerning. But uh, a lot of people don't realize it yet, but it's happening. It's, it, it's going to happen. It will happen. And uh, everybody has to be aware of it. I guess my question is this, and, and I know I'm asking kind of for some deeper insight, but I, because you are just so in, in touch with, with the consumer, what is this going to do uh, to sort of the the living status or quality of, of Americans, broadly speaking? So when you tell me that fuel, fuel prices and food prices are going up, Sounds bad. Okay, I get that wages are going up, but which which one's going to go up more, and and for how long? I, I don't get the sense people are thrilled about higher prices. Obviously, we know the labor market is in really good shape, and it's really hard to find people right now. But is this all? How is this all going to shake out? Oh, at some place it's going to level out. But the other form of secret inflation is shrinkflation. Have you heard about shrinkflation? In other words, if you were buying uh, towels and there was 64 uh, towels to the, uh, the, the the roll, now there might be 52. So people just buy it and don't realize they're getting less. Uh, if you were buying, I, I remember when uh, coffee was 16 ounces. Now it's 12 ounces. Uh, I remember when when uh, Tropicana maybe was 64 ounces. Now maybe 54 ounces and so on and so on. So there's shrinkflation and there's inflation, uh, the rising prices and the reduction of product delivered to the consumer. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you've kind of brought us back to the theme of the show today, the flation theme. It's shrinkflation. We all know it. We see it in kind of soda bottles and, and all the rest of it. So my final question is, what would you say to policymakers? I mean, are we trying to solve this problem? Is this all a good, healthy thing we're just going to move through? Do we need to do something now from the Fed? I just think it goes back to Washington uh, and the fact that, don't, don't forget, America has a hundred years worth of oil. Why are we pushing uh, the American public towards electric cars, where 90 percent of the batteries for electric cars are made in China? So it, it's, it's making smart moves. Why did we uh, cancel the Keystone Pipeline? America has a hundred years worth of oil. All the oil would go down the Keystone Pipeline from Canada and America yeah. down to the Gulf Coast, produced by uh, American workers made into gasoline and yeah. distributed in South America, Caribbean. Now, we shut that down. 
And what happens? We, we turn yeah. on uh, Russia and Germany. And so in terms of America the gas pipeline, yep, the Nord Sea. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.